Hey everyone, a lot of you don't know this, but I love electronics and prototyping. So my home electronics lab is one of my happy places. It's not much, but it has everything I need for my DIY projects. We can talk about that in another video. I have a tool wall, a multimeter, a two-channel digital oscilloscope. This is basically a glorified voltmeter plot against time. I have my solar station where I make awesome solar in time lapses. I have a solar mat, my magnetic helping hands, my homemade film extractor, and lastly, my lab bench power supply. If that sad music or the video title didn't hint to you what this video about, this power supply is kind of the problem. How this works is I have a 13.8 3 amp radio shock power supply my dad gave me when I was 10 years old and recently learned about electricity by sticking a fork in a wall socket. <laughs> this is connected to a step down voltage regulator, also known as a buck converter, the output of which I control via this teeny tiny variable resistor, which I have to use a teeny flat tip screwdriver to turn. And I also soldered a small voltmeter to the output so I can know the voltage. Uh, look at this dude. <laughs> Wait till you see the. F <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Bear in mind, this voltmeter cannot read voltages below 3.3 volts. You suck! I know it's messy and annoying, and I think it's time for an upgrade. This is the lab bench power supply, as a cup and string is the smartphone. It can get a job done, but it doesn't mean I should use it all the time. So, that's gonna be today's video. I started online by looking at some options to buy, and they were either too expensive or too heavy to ship to my country. I would have to pay an arm and a leg in duty fees, skybox fees, and taxes, sadly because I live outside the USA. <laughs> So the only option was to make my own lab bench power supply. And I want to use one of my broken ATX power supplies I had. For this, I had to order two items. Nevertheless, these were light and cheap and brought the cost of this project to around $60, about half the cost of an equivalent lab bench power supply. I found this UC Tronic digital step down stabilized power supply, which was perfect. You can control the output digitally with a precision of 0.01 of a volt. It has constant current and voltage features, overcurrent protection, and it can store these in memory slots. It also has this nice little screen that displays the voltage, current, and power. Perfect for checking the power usage of my projects. Secondly, I got this power module that converts my wall AC voltage to 36 volts 5 amps DC. I should warn you to always take protection when dealing with AC voltages as I am not Electro Boom and I would not be shocking myself in the name of science today. <laughs> when we combine the two power supplies, we get a 160 watt lab bench power supply with variable output from 0 to 32 volts at 5 amps. Not like 90% of my projects only need 5 volts, 500 milliamps. The rest of the items I had lying around, including a pair of banana plug sockets, which I took from my breadboard, a LM2596 buck converter to power the fan, and an old ATX power supply. This one exploded on me a few months back, but its dead carcass would make a great case for this new power supply. So kudos for me for recycling. This one's for you, Greta. How dare you? I'm also going to be using my 3D printer and my new drill press for this project, but you really only need a good Dremel or any small rotary tool with a metal cutting disc. I will put links to everything you need in the description below. I first started by measuring the dimensions of the front of the ATX power supply where I was going to put the display and connectors. And then I headed over to Fusion 360. This is going to be my first design I'll be putting on Thingiverse, the first of many as I learn more about 3D design. I added space for a USB connector if anybody wants to add one. Once done, I sent this to my 3D printer and luckily enough, it was perfect on the first try. To test if your power supply is still good, all you need to do is plug it in, power it on, and use a wire to connect the green wire to 
to a black wrong wire on the 24 pin connector. In my case, nothing happened and there was no voltage on any of the other pins. Ideally, this is what should happen. The fan should come on with a constant spin. Using a multimeter, we should get 12 volts on the yellow pins and respective voltage on the others. So I'm going to scrap this power supply and leave the AC port and switch to be used later. I'm also going to save all this wire for future projects. I'm not sure what else I can salvage from this power supply, so I'll leave that for another video. I used a 3D printed plate as a stencil and marked off the drill holes and cutouts for the power supply housing. I then headed over to my drill press. I first drilled the four corner holes to secure the front plate. I'm using a half inch tech point screw here. Next was the holes for the banana sockets. For these, I used a quarter inch drill bit and things started to get a bit hot and steamy. I then clamped the housing on my table vise and the plan here was to cut out the holes for the display slightly wider than the one outlined. It didn't need to be perfect since I had the front plate already 3D printed. I put on a metal cutting disc and tried cutting but my hand started to shake and I was afraid this was going to run away from me. I called that quits way too early and tried to cut out the display with a series of drill holes on the drill press. This was working great until I broke the damn drill bit. I returned to the home of my first defeat, sucked up my shame and found the guts of a surgeon in me and precisely used the Dremel to cut out the rest of the hole for the display. I used a file to get rid of the extra sharp corners and check that everything was fitting unobstructed. The last thing to do was to drill the holes to mount the AC to DC power supply and the small voltage regulator for the fan. I lined up where I wanted them to go and used a fine tip marker to mark out the holes. I would use some metal standoffs to raise these off the base. Using the same cables I salvaged from before, I cut 6 of these about 6 inches long. The first two would connect the AC to DC power supply to the power module. Two would connect the power module to the banana plugs, which I added some ring crimps to the end. I soldered the last two wires to the inputs of the buck converter. On the output, I added this JST connector I got from the power supply circuit board. I added the standoffs to the housing. I added the banana sockets, making sure it fit in the groove and used a plastic space at the back to prevent it from touching the metal. Then I added the connecting ring wire and then the nut. Then I screwed up the wires to the AC to DC converter. Note the live wire, the brown cable in this case, should be connected to the screw terminal connected to the fuse, which in this case was the one closest to the corner. It would still work either way because this is AC voltage, but just in case anything happens, we do not want the live wire touching the case. I pass the wires through the cutout for the digital regulator the AC to DC module goes to the input of the electronics power module and the output goes to the banana sockets. A flip of the switch to do a quick power test here showed that everything was working. 
I don't know. I used my multimeter to set the output voltage of the regulator for the fan to 12 volts and then I plugged in the fan and realized this thing was playing way too fast and it was loud. So I further reduced the voltage until the fan was producing a very light breeze to keep the noise level down while still removing any excess heat. This was almost silent. I tested the voltage features of the digital power module with my multimeter to see how accurate it was. And I must say, I was pretty impressed. I snapped it into the housing and this thing looks great. But the last problem was the fan could no longer fit inside of the housing as the heatsink for the module was sticking out. I can either leave out the fan and add a small one to the back or I can just put a fan on the top. And I was studying, would that even look good? Turns out this didn't change the look that much. And if anything, it made it look a lot cooler. I was really happy with how this was coming out. Last thing to do was to add some feet. So I used this foam tape on the underside to prevent the power supply from scratching up the table and sliding around. This is just some foam insulation tape used between doors. Flipping the switch at the back puts on the display and it loads up beautifully. I'm using some banana plugs to alligator clips here and I'm going to test this out with a small moto with a fan. I can enable and disable the output with the on and off button. Also, I can control the output voltage and see the corresponding current and power usages. A click of the set button, I can move the cursor over the voltage digits and use the knob to increase and decrease the value. I can also control the current output just as easily. I can also store up to 10 voltages, two of which can be quickly accessed by holding down the M1 or M2 button. In the menu, I can set the levels of protection. So all in all, a pretty good module. The last stress test was to use this to power my LiPo battery charger. And damn, that was a lot of current draw. And I don't feel any kind of heat coming from the module. This thing passes with all kind of flying colors. And finally, I can lay my old power supply to rest and add this new one to my home electronics lab. I hope everyone liked and enjoyed this video. Do consider hitting that subscribe button. And as always, this is just Baron. Just do it yourself, just be yourself. And I will see you in my next video.